Hi, I'm Michael LaFosse from the Origami Doe Studio, and this is my butterfly for Ruth Ann Bessman. Many people will know Ruth Ann through Origami USA and all of the volunteer work she's done, mostly recently for the exhibits and the Origami by Children. Let's learn how to fold this butterfly for Ruth Ann Bessman. This example was folded from a 15 centimeter square, colored this magenta on one side and pink on the other. You can see there's a major color and a minor color. So if you're using a piece of origami paper that's colored differently, front and back, begin with your choice of the minor color facing up. Fold in half, bottom edge to top. This will be the major color that will show on the outside. Unfold. And you can see we have a horizontal center crease. Take the bottom edge up to the level of the crease, but don't fold yet. When it's aligned, make a short pinch mark on one side, left or right. Unfold. There's the pinch mark. Take the same bottom edge up to the level of the pinch mark and make a new pinch mark right below the first. So here we have the lower pinch mark and the upper pinch mark. Place the lower pinch mark exactly upon the upper pinch mark. And then fold all the way across. So we have a folded edge at the bottom and a rectangle flap in the front. Fold the free corners of the rectangle flap down to make a triangle, the edge of which aligns at the bottom. And the same thing at the other end. Rotate the paper so you have a brand new bottom edge. Here's our horizontal crease. Take the bottom edge to the level of the crease and make a pinch mark unfold. There's our pinch mark. Take the bottom edge up to the level of the pinch mark and fold all the way across. Unfold. And here's our lowest valley crease. Fold the square corners to the valley crease. Now use the valley crease to fold the flap up and you can see this long trapezoid shape. Flip the paper over and fold in half short edge to short edge and you'll see that the flaps are on the outside of the paper. You'll also notice that there's a crease, a valley crease on the outside here. There, there's also a larger area rectangle on one side of the crease and a smaller area rectangle on the other side. Take the smaller area rectangle and fold it over onto the larger one and sharpen the crease. Stand that rectangle up and open all the way in to the cone bottom so that we may squash fold it symmetrically. Use this folded edge here and this crease for alignment. And your paper should look like this. Flip the paper over to the other side. You'll see this hinge crease here and the larger area rectangle. For a moment, take the larger area rectangle and fold it hinging over to make sure that that hinge is flexible left and right. Now we can stand this area up, open all the way to the cone bottom, and squash symmetrically.
and your paper should look like this. Notice there's a split up here and we have a square corner down here. Take the square corner up to the top end of the split and fold firmly. We have a lot of layers here now. And then stand that triangle flap that you've just made perpendicular to the rest of the paper. Take the triangle flap to the table so that these areas stand up. And we're going to squash fold each of these. Open one of these cones all the way to the center. That's here, all the way in. And then notice this folded edge inside. We're going to use this for alignment, taking the crease from the top layer and flatten it down to that folded edge and then squash fold. Let's do the same thing on the other side, opening all the way and squash. Your paper should look like this. You'll notice these triangle flaps. We're going to pull them out as far as they'll go flat. Just roll them out like this. There's a natural stopping point at this corner and down here at the folded over edge. Let's do the same thing to the other side. Lift open, roll it out as far as it will go flat, and then firmly fold. Now we're going to swivel our squash. Right now the triangle layer here is symmetrical, but we're going to make it a little longer at the top edge compared to the new shorter edge we're making down here. So we're swiveling from this center point to the top corner and this edge compared to our new edge down here this is longer, this is the shortest one, this is our longest edge. This is a scalene triangle. Let's swivel this squash same way. Now when we did that, we moved this crease line and we created a new folded edge. This crease line will be helpful now. Take the triangle corner flap here and fold it over so that this top edge will either align directly with that crease or be parallel to it when we do this. Now there's one more thing before you flatten it. Look here. You'll see that there's another layer with a corner underneath. We want to just cover that corner. And we want this raw edge of paper at the top to align with that crease and fold firmly. Now you can see this raw edge that's underneath this flap. We're going to use that to guide our next fold. Take the triangle corner and bend it backwards to create a new fold that aligns with that raw edge. And finally, take this remnant corner that's sticking out beyond the paper and fold it over onto the lighter colored field. And we end up with this triangle pattern in two colors. We're going to do the same thing on the other wing. So once again, look for this crease. Pay attention to the corner on the layer at the bottom so that when you roll this over you're aligning with the crease and you're just hiding that corner. Fold the corner back 
the new folded edge aligns with that raw edge and then fold the remnant triangle over. Your butterfly should look like this so far. So we've finished with the four wings, now let's work on the hind wings. Notice this four-sided shape here. And also pay attention to this vertical folded edge of that shape. Imagine where the midpoint may be on that folded edge. Lift the free corner up so that you create a fold that runs from this topmost corner down to that imaginary midpoint. So we open that, we fold down to the imaginary midpoint, and you can see how it opens. And it looks like this. We're going to perform a swivel squash here. folding the shape over like that. So it gives a nice border shape to it. Let's do the same thing on the other wing. Here's that short outside edge. Imagine the midpoint. And remember, we're folding from the topmost corner down to that imaginary midpoint. This is what it looks like on the outside. Swivel squash. Roughly some type of symmetry like this. And now we have the two borders. Let's continue working on the hind wing. Roll this layer up and onto the paper of the hind wing so that you make a folded edge that starts up here in the thorax and goes all the way down to the corner that you've made from the swivel squash you'll have a remnant here in the middle. Squash fold that down so that you have an overlap that goes from, from the forewing to the hind wing like that. Let's do the same thing on the other side. And you'll notice that we have a square corner here at the end of this overlap. Notice too that there's a folded edge inside. You see that pink folded edge there. Imagine where that folded edge is or you can burnish the paper to reveal it or you can even do this. Hinge up and down so that you have a crease that mimics that folded edge. The reason for knowing about that line is so that we can fold this corner over like that. The top edge of that new triangle aligns with that edge. Unfold it, open the paper, and push it in to inside reverse fold exactly on the new creases. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Again, if you wish, you can put a sharp crease there and back down. Then go ahead, fold your corner. That's a pre-crease. Unfold, open, and inside reverse fold. Finishing the wings, we take this raw edge and fold it behind itself as far as it will go flat. There are two limits to use for this. Down here at the bottom corner of the wing at this end and up inside right about there there's another limit. You'll feel it when you push the paper inside. That locks everything. It gives the folded edge a nice finish. Let's do the same thing with the other one. There, the wings are done. 
This area will be the head, right here. The thorax will be around here and the abdomen below. We begin by picking up the butterfly and mountain folding in half from the head end to the abdomen end, like that. So we've made a mountain folded edge. Hold your paper like this and pinching that edge, swivel the abdomen corner away from you so that it may touch some point on the hind wing folded edge. But there's another limit to consider. Up here at the head, don't fold all the way to the corner. Give it a little stair step difference. You can see what happened to the crease, where it ends up there. So once you have that set up, flatten it well, and then take the lower set of wings and put them up to cover the upper set. Once again, the head has a little stair step built in. Now we open the paper this way. We're going to squash fold the head and then trim the abdomen. If you look underneath inside the head, up in this area you see two walls and we're going to put a little folded edge in there, a little valley crease. You can take the mountain crease to the valley on one side, just pinch it in. That will give you a little valley crease there. And then on this wall, the same thing. These creases will help your squash go better. Turn the paper over and hold the butterfly closed somewhere in the thorax region. And then you'll see this keel of paper here for the head. Pinch it flat, like that. There's the squash fold. To finish the head, take this flattened piece of paper and bend it under, like that. So we've made the paper for the head. Now, bring the wings together And then we're going to skinny the abdomen. So when you open the abdomen, you can see these folded edges here and there, and there's the tip of the abdomen. And here's a corner. Grab the corner and fold it in, angling so that you create a new folded edge that goes toward the end of the abdomen not all the way to the tip, but tapering down towards it. Do the same thing with the other corner. And then pinch firmly flat. The last thing to do is to open up the wings. So I find it helpful to just bend one wing set at a time from one limit to the next, which is up toward the head. And then do the same thing on the other side. Find a comfortable way to hold the wing set and bend it. Make it look symmetrical. And finally, reach inside the thorax and the abdomen just to round it out a little bit. And there it is, our finished example of a butterfly for Ruth Ann Bessman. We hope you enjoyed this lesson. Now go fold a bunch of them.